In this video, I want to introduce you to the program called Inkscape, and in particular, how it can be used to design guitars. Inkscape is a software like Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW, which are vector-based graphics software. But unlike them, uh, this one is free. It may look overwhelming at first with all the buttons and icons, but for the, the process of designing a guitar, uh, there are only a very limited number of tools and palettes that are really needed. So what I thought I would do is I would continue to work on this project. This is a guitar I'm designing and planning on building. And as I continue to work on it, I will uh, introduce you to the tools that I use. What I want to do now is create the back of this guitar. I have three copies of it and I will only use one of them and here I'm using the layers palette as you can see I've put everything on its separate layer and that way I can manipulate it individually and also turn on visibility. I will select using the select tool up here the body and then make a copy control C and then I will paste it in place. Now I realize that uh, the software is not showing the uh, menu items here, but there's an item called paste in place, which now just makes a copy in its own location. I'll now move it to the side. And since I want to work on the back, I'm going to flip it using this icon here. So now the we're looking at the back and now I want to use the path tool which is one of the most useful tools for making curved lines and I will simply draw out a rough shape of the carve I want to make on the back and as you can see I have a loose path here and I only have to simply press enter to to get rid of that. Now using this tool, the second one here, we can edit the paths. As soon as you select it, the nodes appear on this line. Here I want to change this to a smooth curve a smooth node, sorry, and at this point I can just move it around. Going back to, the, back to the path tool, I'll select it again and just simply rough cut, rough shape the back uh, carve again. Do the same thing. That looks good. So very quickly I can, I was able to create the shapes of the carves that I want in the back. I mean at this point this doesn't have to be exact because I make the carves by hand and but this will give me a good idea. Now I wanna I'm going back to the select tool. I'm gonna select these three items I just created and put them on their own layer. For that I'm going to make a new layer and again I'm noticing that the software is not showing you the palette that, that just appeared. Here it is. And now I'm going to select those three, right click, and again, as you can't see, there's a element called move to layer. And when I click that, I have the option of all the layers and I choose the body, the back carve, and I say move. So now, I, if I toggle on and off, that back is on its own separate layer. The measuring tool is really useful for designing guitars. It's this little icon here. Simply drag and it will give you the distance between the two points. It will also give you intermediate distances as the line crosses different objects. Here the line distance for example is 13.11 inches as you can see at the right. And then you've got intermediate distances in the middle. There's also an angle calculation here as you can see that right now I'm at 15.13 degrees. If you want a straight line for example we want to calculate from this tip straight to the other end I hold down the control key and that prevents the line from moving. The way I drew the outline of the guitar was by importing images of different guitars from the internet and then using the pen tool or the path tool to trace out a custom or hybrid design then 
hiding those images and using the nodal points I was then able to fine-tune the shape that I wanted. As a guide to design I use the golden ratio to help me place things. The golden ratio is basically uh, the ratio of, of this short distance versus the long distance and it's considered to be pleasing to the, to the eye. In this case, for example, if I place the, the box at the extremities of the guitar, I could see that this, this location where, the, where this line is uh, actually intersects with, interestingly with the, uh, with the bridge post and the tail, pit, tail post. The way I use it is, let me hide the different bodies and use the one body. By double clicking I get the node points which I can then move around. So for example in this case this nodal point which gives me the curve in this guitar is, is centered on the body. If I move it to to this location it actually gives me a different shape. Now you could see here that I've used it in many different ways and it's basically uh, a nice guide to use. So I want to show you now the way I drew this bridge. In fact I didn't draw it at all. It's an image from the internet from the Stumac website. I simply hid the uh, the rest of the image and then position the the bridge at the right location. Now if I right click and again I'm I realize that the video recording software is not showing you the right click window but there's a clip release element in there which releases the the mask. So here's the here's the original image that I simply saved from the Stumac website and here's the bridge that I want to keep. So by placing this random rectangle over the area that I want to keep and then selecting both then right click and say set clip it hides the rest of the image and that's what I also I did also for the uh, the tailpiece. The humbucker pickups I drew from plans and this is a the do once use many times situation where I can now now that I've got it drawn I can select it all group it by doing control G into one element and then I can save this as a separate file and bring it in when uh, using in different projects then I also designed a humbucker ring custom ring by curving out the edges did the same thing for the neck pickup and here I put a regular uh, pickup ring. Now as a rough guide to the final position of the pickups I downloaded an image from the Google from Google Images that shows the vibration pattern of a standing wave so this would be the pattern that a open string when plucked would create. You have the fundamental note and then the various harmonics so positioning the pickups away from the nodal points in general should be beneficial. I mean this is not a strict rule but it's interesting to to observe. Now I'm also designing the headstock, the peg head. However, I'm having a bit of a hard time coming up with a with a design that I like. But the advantage of working in software again is that you can can modify things as you want and also undo them. So that's something I'm working on. The tuner holes are positioned that so that the strings do not touch each other and that's easy to do with software. You basically can drag these guidelines make sure that the strings are have enough space between them. I will continue to work on this 
project in Inkscape. I will draw the guitar on its side to get the thickness and then figure out the, the angle of the neck. It's the first time I'm using Inkscape to design the guitar and I'm so far enjoying it quite a bit. It's not the perfect tool. There are a few things that can be improved. However, for the majority of the work to design and plan, it's actually, it's actually quite nice. The step after this would be to then print this file and then start working on the templates. So that's all I wanted to show you for this um, video. It's definitely not a tutorial, but just a quick overview of what Inkscape can do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to this channel.